I've been playing Fire Emblem for quite a few years now, so as such I've scoured the internet many a time to participate in discussion, hunt for merch, research videos, etc etc. And along the way I've stumbled across a lot of obscure knowledge about the series. Not anything amazing mind you, just a lot of stuff that many people would call, well, useless. Are you going to come away from this video smarter? Probably not. But if I can find great satisfaction in knowing some of this ridiculously obscure information, then maybe so can you. Welcome to Useless Fire Emblem Trivia. If you've watched any extensive amount of anime, or even video games, you've probably at some point heard the voice of Spike Spencer, Shinji in Evangelion, Rolo in Code Geass, Ring a Bell in Bravely Default, he has a pretty impressive catalogue of characters. However, one you might not know is Marth, or should I say, Mars. See, Spike voiced Marth in the Fire Emblem OVA that released in the late 90s, and he did a pretty good job as the Hero King himself. In fact, I might even personally prefer his performance over Mars' modern English VA, Yuri Lowenthal. However, after his role in the Fire Emblem OVA, Spike Spencer vanished from the series, until 2013 when he made his triumphant return in Fire Emblem Awakening, as Exilus. That's right, the same man who brought us one of the most noble characters in Fire Emblem also voiced one of its most hideous. But that's not the most peculiar fact about the OVA. Studio Ghibli, yes, that Studio Ghibli, played a role in the production of the Fire Emblem OVA. While the project was overseen by Studio Fantasia, it is very common for work to be outsourced to other studios, and Studio Ghibli is credited for doing the in-betweening work on Episode 1. For those who don't know what in-betweening is, it's the process of drawing the frames in between keyframes so that the animation looks smooth. It's a painstaking and tedious process, so to think that the same hands that worked on Totoro may have had a hand in creating the Fire Emblem OVA is quite cool. This would probably be more common knowledge if it weren't for the fact that Ghibli are not listed in the North American or European credits, at least not correctly. Someone on the translation team must not have realized that the credit was referring to Ghibli, so it stayed in its Romaji form, Ghibri. Or as it was listed in the credits, Ghibri. Have you ever wondered why the English lyrics of Lost in Thoughts All Alone seem kind of… off at times? There's the simple reason that translating song lyrics from Japanese to English is difficult because of how the languages are structured and pronounced, but a more compelling answer lay hidden in the past of a single individual, Audrey Drake. Back in the day, I was a die-hard IGN fanboy, I checked the site for news and reviews almost every single day, so I ended up being quite familiar with their Nintendo writing staff around 2012 and 2013, and at the time, Audrey Drake was one of the lead editors, and happened to review Fire Emblem Awakening. Now this particular review of Awakening is the most watched on YouTube and most likely the entire internet. It's probably the reason many people decide to pick up Awakening, as Audrey gave it a 9.6 with endless praise. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, Audrey left IGN later that year and got employed at Nintendo Treehouse as a localization writer. As a result, if you look in the credits of recent Nintendo titles, it's quite likely you'll see her name there. And one of those games is Fire Emblem Fates. But that's not the most peculiar thing about her role, and here lay our answer. She is solely credited for the English lyrics of Lost in Thoughts all alone. It's kind of weird seeing a person educated in journalism credited for translating songwriting, but it would actually explain a lot in terms of the awkward flow and lyrics at times. I'm not trying to give Audrey a hard time here, as I mentioned earlier, translated songwriting is no easy task, but it's kind of fun to think about the fact that the person who reviewed Fire Emblem Awakening for IGN actually went on to write the English lyrics for Lost in Thoughts all alone. Absolutely useless knowledge? Yes, but intriguing all the same. Why does Soth show his belly button in Radiant Dawn? For the five of you who have pondered this great mystery, the answer shall be revealed. In Tellius Recollection Volume 2, 
a book released only in Japan documenting the production and making of the Tellius games, character designer Chie Takaya goes on record stating, I remember when consulting the directors, they said, we want him to have the vibe of having worn the same clothes all this time, and simply patching them up now and then. That is not the only piece of pristine knowledge found within the book. The origins of the majestic man himself, Oliver, are revealed for all, as his character was the brainchild of not the writers or the artists, but a distinct community within the development team. The programmers. But perhaps the most profound knowledge within the pages of this compendium is in a quote from Map Unit Chief Ikuko Nishikawa and his startling revelation after an entire team was formed just to make the characters of Tellius as beautiful as possible. I came to realize just how important pretty characters are to the Fire Emblem franchise. So there you have it. You now know some of the most useless and impractical Fire Emblem knowledge out there. What you do with this power is up to you, but if you want to increase the IQ of your fellow viewers, leave below in the comments your favorite tidbit of Fire Emblem trivia. And that's all for today. I'll see you all next time.